Welcome back scientists, it's Cynthia here. Welcome to your last lesson in chapter two, lesson five. Today we will figure out which island's weather will continue to be the best for the orangutans. We'll compare the weather on Arc, Blue, and Creek Islands to the weather where the orangutans already live. Then we'll write our argument for the Wildlife Protection Organization and recommend one island for the orangutan reserve. As a reminder, here are our three claims. Claim A. Arc Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Claim B. Blue Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. And Claim C. Creek Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Do you remember after our last lesson, we were missing some key ingredients strong evidence about precipitation from two islands. Luckily for us, we have two new evidence cards to review. Evidence card 22 says, Creek Island total precipitation in August, 214 millimeters of rainfall. Evidence card 23 says, Arc Island total precipitation in August, 300 bowls. Hmm. Do you think that new evidence is strong enough to include in our arguments? I noticed that card 22 seems to be strong. I bet you already guessed it, but they measured in millimeters, which is just like how meteorologists measure. Card 23 might be considered weak because it's measured in bowls, which we know we can't compare because every bowl is a different size. We will spend a few minutes adding this new strong evidence from card 22. This will be useful because it gives us more data for our argument. In the next part of our lesson, we'll focus on choosing a claim. Let's look back at our claims and figure out if we can cross off any of the ones we've already looked at. With all the data that we have, do you think we can really convince the Wildlife Protection Organization to build the reserve on Ark Island? You can pause your video if you want, explain your thinking to a partner near you, or you can write it down if you need to. But I really want you to think, can we recommend Ark Island? Why or why not? Hopefully you had a chance to share that with someone near you or write it down, but I think we could agree that the precipitation evidence from Ark Island is pretty weak, so we cannot recommend it this time. It's measured in bowls, and we cannot compare that to precipitation data from Blue Island and Creek Island, which are both measured in millimeters. So we'll just have to cross that off for now. Now let's think back. Do you think the weather on Blue Island or on Creek Island will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live? This would be a great chance to pause and explain what you think if you had to choose right now with all the evidence we've collected over chapter two. Some ideas you might have would include that Creek Island has the hottest temperature range in August. So we could predict the temperature will continue to be higher on Creek Island. Do you remember that Creek Island, now that we've added it in, also has the most rain in the month of August? So we could predict that it will continue to have the most rain. If you are not yet convinced that Creek Island might be the best, let's look back. Welcome back scientists, it's Cynthia here. Welcome to your last lesson of chapter two, lesson five. Today we are gonna figure out which island's weather will continue to be the best for the orangutans. We'll compare the weather on Arc, Blue, and Creek Islands to the weather where the orangutans live. Then we'll write an argument for the Wildlife Protection Organization and recommend one island for the orangutan reserve. As a reminder, here are our three claims. Claim A, Ark Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Claim B, Blue Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. And Claim C, Creek Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Do you remember after our last lesson, we were missing some key ingredients. 
you guys wanted me to ask the Wildlife Protection Organization for a little bit more data on precipitation. And luckily, here we have it. Evidence card 22 says, Creek Island total precipitation in August, 214 millimeters of rainfall. Evidence card 23 says, Ark Island total precipitation in August, 300 bowls. Now we wanna make sure we have strong evidence from these two islands. Do you think this new evidence is strong enough to include in our arguments? Why or why not? You might notice that card 22 about Creek Island might be strong. It's measured the same way that meteorologists measure, and that's in millimeters. Card 23, I think we might have to say it's weak. They measured in bowls, which we cannot compare to other data because we know bowls can come in all kinds of sizes. So we can add our new strong evidence from card 22 um, because that will be more data to use for our argument. Now the next part of our lesson focuses on choosing a claim. Let's figure out by looking at our claims if we can cross off any of the ones we've already looked at. Let's think about claim A. Do you think we can really convince the Wildlife Protection Organization to build the reserve on Ark Island? Take a minute and think. You can write down if you need to and pause the video. You can tell someone near you. But I want you to really think about why or why not can we convince the Wildlife Protection Organization to build the reserve on Ark Island? If we really think about it, the precipitation evidence from Ark Island is weak. It's measured in bowls, and we can't use that to compare to the data from Blue Island and Creek Island, which is in millimeters. So for now, we're going to have to cross off Ark Island's claim. Let's look at our other two islands, Blue Island or Creek Island. Do you think the weather on Blue Island or Creek Island will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live, and why? Think back to everything you've learned in Chapter 2. Some ideas you might have would be that Creek Island had the hottest temperature range in August, if you remember. So we could predict the temperature on Creek Island will actually be higher than Blue Island. Do you remember the precipitation on Creek Island? They also had the most rain in the month of August. So we could predict that it will continue to have the most rain. So, based on a new evidence, we might have a new claim. Creek Island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live. Now, if you are not yet convinced that claim C is the claim best supported by our evidence, let's remember a few key details. The island that had the hottest temperature range in August, the whole range of it, gave us a pattern. And that pattern led us to create the idea that Creek Island will continue to be hotter than Blue Island. The island with the most rain, as I already said, is the total rainfall overall for the whole month, and that was Creek Island. So we think that Creek Island has got to be better than Blue Island. Last time we wrote the argument, we chose Blue Island. But now is your time to pause and take a minute to think, why have we changed our minds? What new data helped you decide that Creek Island is our new claim? I'm going to pause the video now and write down my answer and I'll see you in a second. I hope you had a chance to write down your thinking. Here's what I wrote. The last time we only had one day of data. Now we have data from a whole month, so we're better able to predict what the weather will continue to be on each island. When scientists get new evidence, they can change the claim they're arguing for. As meteorologists, we choose a different claim than we chose before because our new claim has stronger evidence. Stay tuned for the second part of our lesson in the next video. See you then. Welcome back. Now is our chance to tell the WPO what we think. Remember the purpose of a scientific argument is to convince people that a certain claim is the best by using strong evidence. The WPO needs strong evidence so that they are convinced they have made the right decision when they build the reserve. Here is our checklist for scientific arguments. Number one, it answers a question with a claim about the natural world. 
Number two, it includes evidence to support the claim. And number three, it uses scientific language. Before talking about scientific language, let's look back to chapter one when we had an argument that we made about heavy coats. Here's a new example argument that includes more evidence to support the claim. The question on the left says, in which city would you need a heavy coat, Newburgh or Oldburg? And the claim is you would need a heavy coat in Oldburg. The evidence shows that heavy coats are good for the coldest weather. The evidence shows that someone measured the temperature in Newburgh every day for a month. The range was 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The evidence also shows that someone measured the temperature in Oldburg every day for a month. The range was 32 to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that Oldburg is colder than Newburgh. So the argument includes evidence showing that Oldburg is colder than Newburgh. That means it really truly supports the claim. When you write things like the evidence shows and this means that, those are examples of scientific language. It's also important to use scientific words such as range and temperature. Scientific language helps scientists communicate their arguments clearly. Scientific voca vocabulary is really important to make a good scientific argument. For the next few minutes, you'll pause the video and write your argument on a piece of paper. If it helps you to draw, you can also do that or to think aloud with a partner, a stuffed animal, a tree nearby, anything that works for you. Let's look at what it says here. The directions say, write a scientific argument that answers the question. And the question, which island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live? Which island do you remember choosing for which weather, where, where the weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live? Hopefully you agree and wrote Creek. The WPO knows how to build reserves, but they're not experts on weather data or predicting weather. As experts on that topic that we now are, we will need to explain our ideas very clearly. Notice I wrote the word creek in the blank to complete the claim. The first piece of evidence collected in the chapter said, orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on earth. Let's indicate that this evidence should also be included today because it helps our reader, the WPO, understand what the orangutans need. Here is an example of scientific language. The evidence shows that orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on earth. This, scientific, this is scientific language because the sentence begins with one of the sentence frames. When you write, I'll provide some scientific language for you to include. You'll also use some strong evidence from your cards in your argument. Now you'll get some time to write your arguments. You can pause here as you start writing. Then make sure to press play so you can see more evidence cards and helpful spelling. I even started a sentence for you. Underneath the claim it says, the evidence shows that orangutans live on some of the hottest, rainiest places on earth. Just like evidence card 13. Here are three more evidence cards for you to use. These all have an example of the daily high temperatures in August for each of the three islands. Use these in your claim and remember once you're done, press play so we can finish our video. With the new evidence we have now, Creek Island seems to be the best choice for an orangutan reserve. I will send your arguments to the Wildlife Protection Organization. Stay tuned for a response. For your lesson reflection today, at the very end of chapter two, you have a couple challenges to pick from, or do both. The first question says, what are you still wondering about weather and climate? Do you think one month of weather data is still enough to predict what the weather in a place will be like for future months? Why or why not? Your second challenge is to draw the weather today or tomorrow where you are. You can add special details and labels just like a scientist would to a diagram. 
Also, just like the boy we read about in Seeing the World Through Numbers, I hope you are still keeping track of the temperature in your city every day for 30 days. If you forgot a few days, you can always look back at the recent weather. Just ask an adult or older sibling to help. Now, great job in Chapter 2, everybody. Stay tuned for Scientist Kate as she returns in Chapter 3 to guide you. Bye for now.